from sunny St. Leonard's on the south coast of the UK, this is the Keto Woman Podcast. Brought to you by me, Daisy Brackenhall. Before we get started, I would just like to give a huge shout out and a big, big thank you to Jane Hanna. Thank you, Jane, for becoming my latest supporter on Patreon. It's really good to have you on the team. And this is your time at the top of the show. Jane went to patreon.com forward slash keto woman and signed up with a monthly pledge to support me in making this podcast and Monday Mindset and bringing it to you. So thank you once again, Jane. This show is for you. Hello, keto lovelies, and welcome to episode number 213 where I am joined by my favorite keto foodie favorite people, Dan and Erica from Have Butter Will Travel. And they are back with another couple of episodes, the first of which I'm sharing with you here today. I always look forward to chatting with Dan and Erica. Not only do I find it exciting waiting to discover what keto foodie favorite they're going to share with me, but I also very much enjoy spending some time in their company. They're a fantastic couple and always so enthusiastic and engaging talking about keto and food. And I always have great fun spending time with them. So I really hope that you share with my enthusiasm and have been enjoying these episodes too. Now, I realized after I said last time, well, I'm going to wait and let it be a surprise for you too, that you probably saw in the title of the podcast what food we were going to be talking about. And today, I'm sure, is exactly the same. But just in case you haven't seen already, I won't tell you what it is we're going to be talking about, but it is an absolute staple when it comes to most people's keto diets. But also, as Erica mentions, one of those foods that kind of divides the camps. You either love it or hate it, or I guess are a bit meh about it. As we both agreed, we've sort of gone through phases. Something that we used a lot to start with, then went off it a bit, and have now started to fall back in love with it. I have to say it's an ingredient I don't use that much. I guess I use in certain forms fairly regularly, but I'm hedging around and rambling on about something that you may or may not yet know what it is I'm referring to. So I shall shut up on that and leave you to the episode very shortly. But first, let's have a quick roundup of what I've been up to this week. I think I might have mentioned in last week's intro that I was heading over to Worthing at the weekend to meet up with my family to go out for a birthday lunch for my sister's 40th. It was actually her birthday on Monday, but we all got together on Sunday and went to a Nepalese restaurant for lunch, which was delicious. I enjoyed it very much and it was a lovely sunny day in Worthing so we had a nice walk there and a lovely walk along the seafront on the way back. All the kids were on good form and always enjoy getting together and having a lark together so it was a really nice time. Most importantly of course my sister really enjoyed her special day and of course it was all about her. I'm not sure how she feels about being 40. It's one of those big zero numbers. But they always have the big sister, me, to look and point at with an extra 10 years or so. So she's always going to be young compared to me. But it was a lovely day. And the dogs spent the day with Elissa, their dog sitter, and had a very nice day. She was a bit bewildered when I got back and asked how they'd all been getting on. She said Rocket was fine until he spent about an hour under the bed for no apparent reason. I said, ah, was there a fly flying around by any chance? She said, yes, at least until Amy ate it. Apparently Amy managed to catch it and eat it. I said, well, that's the reason. He's still very, very wary of flies. And indeed, he was still looking around when I got back. So how much really he's got over his anxiety problem or how much of it is down to the fact that there aren't many flies around at the moment, I'm not entirely sure. Overall, he's a much happier dog. So 
There's no point in overthinking it too much. But on the subject of Rocket, he is very, very much in my bad books. We have a sort of all-in-one room set up at the moment. And it is a lovely room, lovely high ceilings in my living room. But it serves as my bedroom, living room and study. And I have a little table set up at one end of the room next to the sofa, which is why you will often hear Bets softly snoring in the background because she has a spot on the sofa right next to me that she loves to occupy and I don't have the heart to move her most of the time unless she is snoring particularly loudly. But anyway, the little table I have... The last few days, Rocket has decided that he would quite like to sit on the table, thank you very much, when I'm out. And I've been coming back to find sometimes him actually on the table, but other times just evidence that he's been there. So some, you know, the paperwork's been knocked off or there are doggy paw prints on my laptop, which I have actually learned to leave shut to make sure that he doesn't um, do who knows what by walking all over the keyboard. But I came home yesterday to find that he had chewed through the adapter charger cable to the laptop. As you can imagine, panic ensued. I'll be honest, my first thought was not, luckily you didn't electrocute yourself. Um, Mostly, I guess, because he clearly hadn't electrocuted himself. Um, But really, I was just worried about the fact that everything was going to come to a grinding halt. And indeed, that's why I'm recording this later than I intended to. And the editing is behind. Hopefully, I'm still going to get it out to you today, which is Friday. But if not, that's my reason why. So there was a mad scramble trying to get hold of a replacement because although the battery was replaced fairly recently, it still doesn't hold charge for that long. Fortunately, he'd managed to chew through it after it had charged up. So I did have a fully charged laptop, but I knew it wasn't going to last for long. I had a recording date with Terry, so I mostly just conserved energy to make sure I'd have enough for that. But otherwise, there wasn't much else I could do. And all my work really is on the laptop. There's very little I can do on any other device. So I spent most of yesterday evening trying to track down a replacement which thankfully I did manage to do. I also ended up watching a YouTube video on how to repair it. And thanks to that YouTube video and my lovely local electrician, Harry, who lives just down the road, he gave me a connection box. I trimmed and stripped down the wires inside the cable. It's a little bit complicated because there's a sort of cable within a cable. And so basically there are two sets of wires that you have to isolate but you do that in the two pieces and then you can twist them up and put them in this connection box and away you go and so I did manage to fix it and it's working so that's fantastic. So I have the second hand one that I picked up yesterday evening which comes complete with some electrical tape around it so I'm guessing somebody tried to chew through that one as well But I have two functioning cables now, which is fantastic. It obviously is going to pay to have a spare hanging around. Although I will be putting things very much out of his way from now on. When it comes to the potential for electrocution, I figured there was probably something going on with it. Some kind of fail safe, I guess not necessarily designed to not electrocute your pets. Um, but just part of the design of it. And it was, if you're familiar with, I don't know if all laptop charging cables are the same, but this is for a MacBook. And going into one side of the box is, I don't know, is it some kind of transformer box? I don't know. But the box, there's a normal cable coming in one side, which is the bit that you plug into the socket. And then there's the thin bit that you plug into the laptop and it was that thin side that he chewed through and I asked Harry when I went to pick up this connection box about the whole electrocution thing and he said well yes it was lucky that was the side that he chewed through if it had been the other side I might have come home to a dead rocket 
So once the initial anger wore off, I'm now thanking my lucky stars that he decided that he was going to chew through that side. It makes sense because I can imagine what it was he was doing. He decided to sit on my slash his (laughs) desk and probably just lean over and chew through the cable. It's not the first time, actually, he's been known to chew through the cable of an external hard drive. That wasn't actually plugged into anything at the time. Um, But there you go. So he has form and I am blaming him. I don't think it would have been anyone else. I think it was him. I have to tell you, he showed absolutely no remorse at all. I'm sure you're aware there's no point admonishing a dog when they've done something naughty unless you catch them right in the act. But I have to admit, I did vent my anger a little bit and the steam was coming out of my ears. But he just looks at me as if to say, I really don't care. And of course, you know how much I love him and the others. So I have mostly gotten over it now. It helps, of course, that I managed to find a replacement and fix the original one in a relatively timely fashion. So really, that's it. That's the excitement for my week. Other than that, I've been carrying on with my usual routine of rolling out of bed in the morning, making a flask of coffee, putting my swimming gear on and heading down to the sea. And I've been doing that every day. Then I come back and take the dogs out for their walk and we all come back and have breakfast. It's a good routine and a fantastic way to start the day. Oh, and that's the other thing. How could I forget? A very dear and old friend of mine. I say old, I guess that works in two ways. (laughs) We've known each other for a very, very long time. Since we were about 13, we met at school and we used to get up to all sorts of naughtiness together. And she's been on the podcast, actually. I can't for the life of me think of which episode numbers it was, but there were two of them. We told her story in two parts and she talked about beating fibro or chronic fatigue syndrome. She actually lives in Spain, but she was over for a week or two visiting her mum and going off on a trip with her for her birthday. And her mum only lives up in Kent and not a very long train journey away. So she came down for the day, which was lovely. She got to see this place and meet all the animals. And then we went out for lunch. She treated me to lunch and we went to a local place called the Farmyard which I have had my eye on for quite a while and have been keen to try out. It's one of those places, they do your typical meals as well, but they do the whole small plates thing, which I'm a real fan of. And so we just basically kept ordering small plates until we were full. The absolute highlight for both of us was the steak tartare, which is one of her favourites. And she spotted it on the menu and suggested we have it. And I have to say, I was a little bit hesitant because I've never actually tried it, I don't think. And I can be a little bit squeamish about things that are raw, but it sounded really good. It was mixed with some Asian spices and I think, I've forgotten the name of it, but some kind of Japanese mayonnaise dressing type thing. And so I said, yeah, you know, sure, let's go for it. I'll give it a try. It's always exciting to try something for the first time. And it came out and instead of that typical way that you see it served in France, sort of formed into a beef burger patty type thing, usually that they mix in, I think, um, some seasoning and, and some bits and pieces. But quite often it's served like that, I think, with all the accoutrements that go with it that you mix up as you choose. I'm not entirely sure. Like I say, it's not something that I've ever had. But this came with all the bits and pieces mixed in and it had this mayonnaise and some different herbs and spices and some sesame running through it. And it was served up on little lettuce cups. So perfect, perfectly keto And I have to say, utterly delicious. The steak they'd use was melt in the mouth, soft and tender. And the flavorings that were running through it were absolutely delicious with this sort of finish of a toasted sesame seed flavor at the end. They really were very, very good. We had some other things as well, but both of us agreed that was the absolute highlight of the meal. So if anyone is listening who lives locally to me, 
do check out the farmyard in St. Leonard's. It really is worth a visit. Tonight is a full moon, apparently. It is the beaver moon, which I can't help sniggering at just a little bit because I am incredibly childish. But it is the beaver moon. It's the full moon and it's also one of the local blue tit swimming group birthdays. So we are meeting for a moonlit swim. And of course, it's that time of year when it gets dark ridiculously early. So we're meeting at four o'clock this afternoon. The mornings now really are my favourite time to swim. And I didn't want to miss out on that morning swim. So it's also going to be a double dip day for me today. But it's nice to get together with this group of ladies. And there's usually much hilarity and fun to be had. And usually a fair bit of nudity too. So there will be plenty of flesh on display under the beaver moon tonight, by all accounts. <laughs> I'm not sure yet whether I will be joining in on that side of it, but I will certainly be going in the sea. It's nice and calm at the moment and it's going to be low tide, so it will be easy enough to do. And I've got some little portable light things that I can put inside my float. So it's, I think, going to be one of those evenings where it looks really pretty because everyone goes out with their floats that are lit up. So you see all these different coloured lights bobbing about in the water. Nothing much happening on the building front. Still haven't had much time to do anything myself, but I have penciled the builder in to do a little bit of work. Middle of December, I think he said he's coming. I'm going to start him off on... One of the jobs that needs redoing that the first cowboy builder did as a bit of a test case. And we'll see how he goes. To be honest, he can't really make it any worse. So we'll see. We'll see how well he gets on, how well we get on. And we'll go from there. Fingers crossed. He'll be the one who finishes all the work that needs doing here. Apart from the work that's on my list, of course. But that's enough of me rambling on. I've been rambling on for far longer than I intended to. If you're still with me and haven't fast forwarded forward to the main part, the best part, I will hand over now to the very lovely Dan and Erica with this week's Keto Foodie Favourite. I'll see you back here afterwards. Welcome back to another episode of Keto Foodie Favourites with two of my Keto Foodie Favourite people, <laughs> Dan and Erica. Welcome. It's lovely to see you again. Thanks Hi. for having us again, Daisy. <laughs> well, I always get very excited because I go into this. I say, please don't tell me what you're going to talk about because I like a surprise. So... <laughs> What are you going to regale us with today? What is your keto foodie favorite? Well, you may or may not be excited about this one. Uh, I'll say it's the darling of the low carb world. <laughs> this this ingredient <laughs> replacement for pretty much everything and anything. And, you know, there's so many memes about this particular vegetable in regards to low carb. So we have uh, to talk I about I know what it's going to be. Cauliflower today. <laughs> Are you a cauliflower <laughs> fan? I am, actually. I don't like it. Well, let's say I don't love it in every form. But yes, I do think it's very versatile. And yes, I would say I am a fan. Doesn't always agree with me. Sometimes brassicas in general, I find, mm -hmm. get me a bit sort of bloaty. But yes, I am a cauliflower fan. But you can't make cream eggs with it. No. <laughs> I think we used it as a replacement a lot early on and then we kind of got over it for a little while. But now we would have it multiple times a week. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you can overdo it at the start because it is literally used yeah. to replace everything. Yeah, there are quite a few things like that, aren't there? That, yeah. Yeah, you just go through phases and you overdo them and then you just have to not have them for a while yeah then you fall back in love with them very true I think one awesome thing about it is it's pretty readily available in Australia at least I don't know if it's the same in the UK but we can get you know fresh cauliflower we can get riced cauliflower fresh and frozen and there's also you know frozen cauliflower is really good budget 
friendly option that's yeah. available year round. So it is, you know, a cheap and accessible option. And that's probably why it has fallen into the replacement for potato mm. for a lot of people, because it is just easy to find cauliflower yeah. at most places around the world. Mm. And it doesn't have a super strong flavor either. So if you add other flavorings to it, it is pretty, you know, agreeable to becoming different options. Mm, and for 100 grams, it's, it's about three net carbs, I think. So, you know, a pretty easy thing to include in most versions of low carb. And there's one of your recipes, I bet it's going to be in your top five (laughs) that I keep meaning to make and haven't yet. So this is going to spur me on, I'm sure. I can't wait. Let's get going on cauliflower then. I was investigating today all of the different ways that you can use it. And Mm. let me tell you, there is a lot of things people make. With there, there is one. There's one thing on this list that I'm like. <laughs> I wonder if it's the same thing that I was like that, and I tried. And to be honest, I'm still no. It doesn't. It doesn't okay, work. Well, we will see. Maybe, maybe you'll have to tell me. Um, but I guess obviously the most easy options you can do it as a side dish is just you know roast cauliflower is really delicious. Just like drizzle of olive oil and some salt and pepper roasted in the oven and it gets those little Mm, charry bits bits. on the Mm. florets that's the best part Dan will quite often do um, like a tray of that up on like a Sunday and add like a little bit to it breakfast every day and then I'll just pan fry the roasted cauliflower in with my so I'll have my two eggs some form of meat bacon or sausage or something and some of that and it like is even better than roasted (laughs) cauliflower because it's like cooked all in the one pan and it kind of takes on the flavors of the bacon or whatever Mm. it's really good or you can just have steamed cauliflower florets is good like if you're having it something that's saucy it would kind of soak it up rice cauliflower is a super popular thing to have and I guess it's just the cauliflower like in a blender until it's like a rice like consistency now I have a question for you about rice cauliflower and see Mm -hmm. if you've noticed this or not okay Riced cauliflower that you buy, and I bought it in two forms. I've bought it fresh. I've also discovered that you can get it frozen and it's Mm -hmm. depending what you want to do with it. It seems okay frozen. It's a very, very handy thing I found Mm -hmm. to have in the freezer and to bring out, especially if you're, you know, having it with a curry or something like that. But I have found quite a big difference in flavor and to a certain extent texture between the riced cauliflower that you buy Mm -hmm. and if you make it yourself. And I suspect, and I think this is quite possibly what happens, and I think it's very sensible, is that the riced cauliflower is what is left they use the stalk so they'll take mm. a cauliflower and they'll cut and, up the florets and then and they... the florets will be mm. sold as florets or they'll be frozen as florets or whatever and anyone who's taken apart a cauliflower knows you're left with a lot of stalky stuff yeah and i think that's the kind of what is being used as a byproduct of they the popularity of rice cauliflower mm-hmm. that's what they make the rice cauliflower with i think that's what i suspect when you actually look at it mm. it looks looks like quite dense little cubes rather than if you rice a cauliflower you end up with something quite different and stronger tasting I found yeah I think also the one that is fresh and already riced for you it kind of has been sitting there for a little while whereas when you rice your own Uh, it doesn't have the same smell Mm. I've noticed like we've bought the one from our supermarket already riced because we're lazy but honestly, <laughs> ricing your own is so easy. It doesn't take more than a couple of minutes. Like if we just have a small stick blender with a food processor kind of bowl on the end, I just put what I can fit in there and rice it up and I might do two batches and it wouldn't take more than two minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I have just found that it tastes different and I prefer... I don't like it as much. I don't. The fresh it, one. It's really strange. Really? Yeah, if I make it myself, it's very odd. Well, we prefer yeah. the would, one we make ourselves. You would think it would be the other way around, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Always. The frozen one is super convenient too, though, but it can be a little bit 
um, or wet. watery or mushy, I guess. So depending on yes, what well, I yes, for. I don't cook it yeah. the way they say to you know they say to cook it the ones I get anyway are in a little steam packet that you mm-hmm. cook it in that and I do sort of start it in that but then I'll make a little hole in the packet and I'll squeeze all the water out and there's a significant amount mm-hmm. and then I'll open that up and then cook it in a pan or something yeah. mm-hmm. which dries yeah, it out I think that's a good option so with the cauliflower rice you can make a risotto which we actually made for the first really time delicious. a week or two ago oh nice i've never tried that there must be an art in that for it not to go all mushy eric is working on a recipe <laughs> excellent <laughs> that's what it i like delicious, to hear the one that i made the other night and i didn't use a recipe mm. or anything but it turned out pretty well but also like a fried rice option which is like a mm. Um, you know, with like egg, egg and bacon, and, and ham yeah, or peas all sorts and... of things in it. That's delicious. It's a good way to disguise the flavour as well. If you don't yes. like the flavour of cauliflower too much, the more kind of herbs and, and spices and flavours you mm-hmm. put in. Yeah. Sure. And obviously you can just have it plain on the side of like a curry or something. Um, and it can be helpful to like thicken up a soup or a stew. Like it gives it a sense of body that, you mm. might be missing if you didn't have, say, flour or whatever to thicken it. And we've also used it as like a base for like a tuna patty or a salmon patty, the cooked cauliflower oh, rice, idea. and it kind mm. of holds it together with an egg quite well. Because potato would normally be used sometimes yeah. in that kind of thing, so the cauliflower mm. does work well and it doesn't add flavour. Like no, it, it just gives a bit of bulk as well. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. Also, you can use like the cauliflower rice, people would make porridge with it or like a rice pudding, uh, well, sweet version. That was the one. Once you get into the sweet, <laughs> I just. I tried making the porridge and, yeah, it still tasted of cauliflower. <laughs> I could not get rid of. The recipe swore that you would not be able to tell it was cauliflower at the end. And they lied, did I they? could tell it was cauliflower. <laughs> they lied. Yeah, well. I mean, people have tried it and said that they agree with that completely, but it wasn't the case for me. And now it might be I used fresh. Mm. It was when I was still in France. Mm-hmm. And maybe if you use the pre-rice stuff, maybe, maybe it wouldn't. I don't know. But just the, the heating of it. And it might be the smell yeah. that if somebody could have delivered it to me without it being <laughs> cooked just here. Regular me, <laughs> yeah. And me smelling the cauliflower as it was heating up, mm-hmm. maybe maybe I was adding all those other things to the taste of it because I knew it smelled of cauliflower. I knew it was cauliflower, yes. so therefore it's going to... I don't yeah. know, but yeah. the upshot That's of true. it was that it tasted like cauliflower <laughs> porridge, which was not overly delicious. I will say we haven't <laughs> tried either of those two sweeter, sweeter options, but people do <laughs> enjoy it, so each to their own um you can also use you know a pizza base is a common way to like people make Mm -hmm. a cauliflower pizza base and then that can roll into like breads and wraps tortillas crackers you name it there is a recipe for it using cauliflower and then it becomes a potato replacement so you can have like a mash or a puree of cauliflower or you can do like a like a potato gratin you can do a cauliflower and cheese kind of equivalent. You can do a potato salad with cauliflower. I think people call it like a no or something. potato salad or no mm. salad. <laughs> you can make hash browns with it. Haven't tried that one. So you can use it like a pasta replacement. So like a macaroni and cheese, you quite often see like a cauliflower version of that. Or in the US, they're big on like baked casserole type dishes. So You can use cauliflower in that in place of like your noodle things. Cauliflower gnocchi, another popular recipe. And we actually could buy that at Costco here and it's really delicious. Oh, Um, nice. Yeah. We also have a recipe in our grazing platter cookbook for a hummus using cauliflower. And that is really Oh, I have seen recipes. I wondered about those. (laughs) And in that Mm. one, we roast the cauliflower first, so you kind of get the toasty flavour to it. Oh, this one. (laughs) 
Another one that's probably Fro- a little frozen bit. Frozen in smoothies. <laughs> because a lot of people. <laughs> Daisy just gagged. <laughs> because a lot of people would usually use a frozen banana in a smoothie and they're looking for something bulk. to give it that oh, same God. bulk. <laughs> Apparently you can, you can put a couple of berries, a couple of frozen cauliflower florets, and you won't even know they're in there. That's what they say. Yeah, you will. <laughs> We are not hardcore no. keto enough to be putting cauliflower in a smoothie. I would skip the smoothie before I put cauliflower in a smoothie. No, that's gross. No, I wouldn't do that. Well, I think we're going to have to try it now. <laughs> You'd have to have such a good blender that blended it so fine because, well, you're basically putting a raw, I know it's sort of a bit mushy when it's frozen. Mm. That's yeah, but you're putting problem, raw cauliflower. It? That's worse. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's going to be <laughs> And then frozen. Yeah. I think have chewy cook bits. It then frozen. Yeah. <laughs> Who could be no. bothered? But we should Just totally don't. film a video of me drinking um, that. We're doing that now. <laughs> yeah. We have to. It's compulsory. <laughs> now, what you, need to, what you need to do is to prepare one without telling Dan that it's got cauliflower in it. Yeah, well, I've made porridge it. in a smoothie for breakfast. <laughs> we, we actually threw up an idea of me doing blind taste tests. So Erica should make two smoothies, one with cauliflower and one without, and see if I can tell the difference Ooh. with a blind yeah, hold on. that's a good idea. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, there's pretty much anything. There's nothing you can't do with cauliflower except, you know, as we know, a Cadbury's cream egg. That you cannot make out of a cauliflower. <laughs> Okay, are we up to our top five? Top five cauliflower recipes. Mm-hmm. What's your favourite? Mm-hmm. Of those ones that you've got listed there, mm-hmm. uh, the baked cauliflower and cheese casserole. So it's just like a what we would call like a potato bake here in Australia, It's but it's made with cauliflower obviously and it's like a creamy cheese sauce. Does it have bacon, bacon and leek in it? Bacon and leek. And cauliflower. and mm. it is Topped delicious. with cheese, cooked in the oven. You won't miss your potatoes. Yummy. <laughs> and we would take that to like family barbecues and stuff and it goes mm. one Very of popular. the first. It will actually beat the potato bake. That like, <laughs> you know, the store-bought kind of potato bake, it would beat it. It is so good. Well, to be honest, cauliflower cheese was always yeah, one of my exactly. favorites growing up. And yeah, my mum would often put um, some bacon in it, sometimes a bit of onion in it. But yeah, I always, mm. I liked, um, you know, I liked macaroni and cheese as well. But this whole, you know, cauliflower cheese being a replacement for mac and cheese yeah. that's never really worked for me yeah. because they were always two separate entities mm-hmm. yeah and it for me anyway it doesn't really work as a replacement i guess if you've never had cauliflower yeah, cheese I and you've only ever had US mac thing, and cheese like cauliflower cheese but yeah now you've just reminded me because i went to boarding school and every sunday we would have a roast lunch like a roast dinner for lunch. Mm. And if it was the cauliflower cheese, like sometimes they'd have cauliflower cheese as one of the sides and that was always like a really good Sunday. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was one of, uh, you know, one of my mum's stock meals was cauliflower cheese and it was one of my favourites. I've always liked it. So, we have yeah. to try this one because it is mm, delicious. I will. Sounds yummy. Another one of our favourite cauliflower recipes is we have a whole roasted cauliflower and it's that's like the one <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I was talking about at the beginning and it's like we're, it's kind of like we're calling it a loaded like what you would say a loaded potato so it's like a whole roasted cauliflower mm. which is like really nicely seasoned and then it has like a creamy cheese sauce and bacon and chives and stuff crumbled on the top and it's really good for like a showstopper you know you put it on the mm. table and everyone takes out a wedge it's yummy one of the other ones we have is a cauliflower soup with smoky bacon. So obviously we put like bacon and cauliflower together in every single recipe we make. But anyway. Good combination. <laughs> the bacon acts almost like a crouton. So the soup gets blended and it's really smooth it's and creamy and, creamy, yeah. and we – like our soups quite like nice and thick, not loose. And then you put the bacon, cooked bacon bits 
like sprinkled through it. And it's almost like you're getting like a bacon crouton. It's mm. really, really delicious. Mm-hmm. Yummy. And then just like a classic kind of cauliflower mash or our version's more like a puree and we put mascarpone cheese in it Mm -hmm. and it makes it like super silky if you do it in the blender Um, and it's really nice side dish for like a steak or something like that. I I just realised that if you haven't heard us on this podcast before, we're Have Butter Will Travel (laughs) and you can find all of these recipes on (laughs) Have Butter Will Travel's (laughs) website but I am guessing that Daisy will also pop links to all of these recipes in the I absolutely um, description. will, yes. Yeah. And we'll have some. I usually swipe some for the social media as well, so they'll they'll pop up in the social media as well. I was just going to say we also have a YouTube channel. Definitely come and subscribe so you can see, you know, Dan doing the cold, Drinking a cold yeah. flour milkshake. <laughs> That actually sounds worse. A cauliflower milkshake sounds worse than a cauliflower milkshake. It really does. (laughs) That is not going to bring all Um, the boys to the yard, that one. (laughs) (laughs) That took you a while, that one. (laughs) So how many have we at now? Four? Have we got one left? We've got one more. One more. We've done four. Four, one one left. So the last one, just a classic cauliflower fried rice. I think you can't beat mm. it. It's delicious, satisfies that kind of if you feel like a takeaway kind of option because that would be a classic thing we would get from a Chinese takeaway here. So, And you could like pair that with something like um, like a stir fry or something, mm. but you can we would eat that by itself as a meal. Yeah, because you put egg yeah. and mm. all sorts of bits and pieces in it. <laughs> and it's kind of where you can get creative as well. Like you could literally put whatever you want in it. Mm. Mm. Well, actually, I could add a couple mm-hmm. to your list. Well, one of them is just a variation. And this is something, I don't know. Are you familiar with Aligo? No, we're not. No. What, what is that? <laughs> no. So Aligo is something that was a regional favorite I think where I used to live in France you know what the French are like Mm -hmm. about having their Mm -hmm. different foods of the different regions and Aligo I think more sort of towards the Cantal more towards the sort of mountainy areas but it was basically a really really smooth mashed potato more of a puree potato Mm -hmm. so loaded with cheese that you would sort of scoop it up and you'd have that stretch you know (laughs) it's so so loaded and I suddenly thought to myself I don't see any reason why I couldn't do this Mm -hmm. with cauliflower mash and there is kind of an art to it it's like with some of these things, when you're really loading something with with fat, mm-hmm. with butter or with cheese or whatever, you, you kind of have to go at it a bit slowly, mm, don't you? Or it can little. split is yeah. one of the things that, that happens when you're adding too much fat. But yeah, you, you basically make a cauliflower mash and you dry it out a bit. I remember watching uh, Kim Howerton's video on this where she, she's made a cauliflower mash by boiling the cauliflower or doing it in the micro, however you do it. Mm-hmm. But then she'll cook it out for a while in a pan, just gently mm-hmm. sort of simmer it to dry it out, yeah. basically. Get rid of some of that water. So you end up with a bit of a drier mash to start with. And then I experimented with adding different things. I think the original potato recipe has a bit of cream, garlic, maybe some butter as well, and then um, a shit ton of cheese, basically. (laughs) Um, It's a particular kind of cheese, and I can't for... Is it actually called Aligo? No, the cheese. I'm trying to remember the actual name of the cheese, but it's kind of... It's almost like... And there are recipes where you use a combination of... And in fact, I used to use things like... um, Things like Emmental, you know, mm-hmm. the, that sort of cheese that when it melts, it goes a bit stretchy. Mm-hmm. It doesn't split as easily as things like cheddar does. But basically, you slowly incorporate it in and you just end up with this really silky smooth mash that when you, yeah, when you pick the spoon up like that with the mashed potato, it <laughs> Sounds stretches. Delicious. It's more cheese than cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is probably as much cheese as cauliflower, and it is utterly delicious. Um, 
So there's that. And it's fantastic with, you know, something like steak, mm -hmm. just, you know, a really nice steak and a pile of this aligo is very delicious. It's a bit of a, a treat thing, I guess, mm -hmm. because you are going a little yeah. bit over the top <laughs> with the cheese. The other thing that I've made, which is really delicious, and it's along the lines of your, I mean, it is roasted cauliflower, but it's cauliflower steaks. Mm. And it's a good example, actually, of where you would take a cauliflower and do multiple things with mm. it. Because if you want the steaks, you need those. Middle, yeah. couple There's only of so far yeah. you can go, aren't mm -hmm. there? You get two or three slices and then you're done. You're on the outside. So, you, you know, you can then use that for something else. But this was done in a particular way. So it was lovely big slabs, big steaks of cauliflower. And it was cooked with lots of olive oil. I think they started it in the pan, actually, and then finished it in the oven. Mm -hmm. But then interesting spices. It was with um, za'atar mm -hmm. and some other things. Mm -hmm. I think maybe some cumin, coriander, yeah. things like that. And really loaded with olive oil. So you ended up with that lovely like you were saying before about roasting cauliflower where you get the mm -hmm. little crispy bits on the outside but really loaded with all these herbs and spices and olive oil and I think I I served it you know this was the main event it was like instead of a steak it was this really delicious cauliflower steak so yes that was that's pretty good and another thing you can do again it's mm -hmm. it looks quite special yeah, doesn't it a yeah, big no, cauliflower it's steak quite popular with vegetarians and stuff too isn't mm. it like doing a yeah. cauliflower steak we used to do a mystery box challenge on our youtube channel and dan would give me the ingredients and i'd have to come up with the recipe and we did yes i like that one <laughs> a bit like ready steady cook <laughs> <laughs> we did a vegan one and i made cauliflower steaks and they, no, were, delicious. they were really delicious and mm. like a a uh, roasted capsicum kind of dressing. It was delicious. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh yes, actually, I think I, I think I might have remember watching that. It did sound good. I remember you talking about that. I think the sauce you liked in particular. We're thinking of all sorts of other things you could have it with. Mm. <laughs> delicious. Well, there you go. So many different things to do with cauliflower. You'll never look at a cauliflower the same. You just think of sometimes <laughs> in a bad way. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> so, yes, so just a quick reminder, Have Butter Will Travel, you can find in all the places, website, social media, YouTube, and there are books and there are all sorts of things. And I almost forgot how we finish. Oh, I've so forgotten. who's going to do the top tip today? <laughs> Dan is head in hands. <laughs> yes, I completely Dan, recording... forgot. How many of these episodes have we done? And I still completely forgot a top tip. Terry does. Terry forgets as well. But yes, you're putting your head in your hands. But we are recording another episode in a minute. So you're going to have to do the next one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Erica, oh what's gosh. your top tip? Don't put cauliflower in your smoothies. <laughs> There's my top tip. <laughs> Do not put cauliflower in a smoothie under any circumstances. <laughs> I guess I would just say, I mean, we've talked about so many things you can do with cauliflower and I haven't I haven't tried a lot of these and I do a lot of cooking and I'm sure other people have, you know, tried one or two versions and stuck with those. So why not experiment and try something new? Mm -hmm. Because I think mixing things up and trying new recipes can be a great way to kind of, you know, spice up your low carb life because you don't want to feel like you're, you know, stuck in a rut or eating the same things all the time. So, you know, just keep it, keep it interesting. Excellent. Good top tip. <laughs> Well, fabulous. Thank you very much, ladies. It has been a very great pleasure, as always. Thanks for having us again, Thank Daisy. You. It was fun. Thank you for staying with me right to the end. I do hope that you enjoyed this week's keto foodie favorite, cauliflower. Are you a fan? What's your favorite way to eat cauliflower? I like it. Like I say, I keep some rice cauliflower in the freezer, which is really handy when I'm making something like curry. It's a good thing just to sop up some of those juices. 
and I guess just make it feel more like a normal curry that you might have with rice. To be honest, I have plenty of days where I'm not eating any kind of vegetable matter at all. So I never really have a fridge full of vegetables, but it's really handy to have some things in the freezer to be able to pull out when you feel like it. It's one of the reasons you'll often see peas in my social media pictures. I know they're not exactly the best keto choice when it comes to vegetables because they're relatively high in carbs. I don't really have much of a problem with them. I like to have something that's green in my freezer. And so many things I find just don't really freeze very well. Peas, I think, are one of the few things that do freeze exceptionally well. So they're a handy thing to have in there. And one of the things I tend to do actually is mix a few peas into the cauliflower rice. And it just adds a little twist to make it a bit more tasty. As I mentioned at the beginning, we did record two episodes at the same time. So we will be back in, I don't know, two or three weeks, I should think, with another keto foodie favorite, which I think will be almost universally popular with everybody. There aren't many people who don't like this particular ingredient. So make sure to listen out to it and see if you agree. It's that time at the end for this week's end quote. And once again, I'm back with one of my favorites, James Clear. I subscribe to his newsletter, so he handily sends me some fantastic quotes every week. And this was one of them, I think, that arrived in my inbox just yesterday. And it caught my attention. I thought it would be a nice one to share with you. So here it is, this week's end quote from James Clear. When in doubt, just say thank you. There is no downside. Are you honestly worried about showing too much gratitude to the people in your life? So there you go. If in doubt, just say thank you. Quite good advice really, isn't it? And I'd like to say a big thank you to you. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you for supporting me in this podcast by continuing to listen. I hope very much that you are heading into a fabulous weekend. And of course, if you're in the States, or I guess wherever you are, if you're American, you will be looking forward to Thanksgiving next week. And I hope that you have a very, very lovely day. And it's just struck me that that was another good reason to share that particular quote. I would imagine it was no coincidence that that was the one he sent out in the week before Thanksgiving. Now I come to think of it. But please do have a very, very lovely day. Until we meet again next time, please take very good care and I'll see you soon. Bye bye, Keto lovelies.